Hello and welcome to devlog number six. There's really only one way to summarize what I've done over the last two weeks, and that is with this clip. Shit. So with that out of the way, what I spent the last two weeks working on is pretty obviously electronic warfare. And there were a couple things that I needed to build up in order to make it work in a way that was realistic and smooth and functional. And so since sensors have always really been the most complicated part of this whole system since the beginning, there's a lot of interconnected parts to make it work in a way that is functional and realistic and flexible. And the only thing that I did over the last two weeks was make it even more complicated. But hopefully this is the stopping point for how um, complicated the sensor system is going to get because it does pretty much everything that I think I really want it to do in terms of its design. So hopefully I'm at a good point with it now. Now in order to get the electronic warfare portion to work in a way that was realistic and that so I wouldn't have to basically come up with a bunch of contrivances for how I was going to you know trick it into looking like the real thing I decided that the easiest way would actually just be to kind of model the real thing. So there's a a relatively accurate radar simulation in the game now. And so the way that works is um, there's a few steps. The first is that I needed a way to model radar cross-section. Radar cross-section or RCS is basically what determines how much energy gets reflected off of a surface and basically defines how well the radar can see an object. And so this weird colored transparent sphere is a pre-computed uh, snapshot of what the cross-section for this ship's hull looks like at given different viewing angles. So from this angle it's pretty transparent because the, the rays come in, they bounce off, they get scattered in different directions, but when you're coming face onto the ship there's obviously a lot more reflection and so the ship looks bigger on radar from that direction. And this is uh, pre-computed, so I wrote a script that basically uh, this is a, an icosahedron, so a bunch of evenly spaced points that form a sphere, and from each one of these points I cast a bunch of rays, figure out what the incidence angle is, figure out how much energy would be reflected, and then store that in a vertex. And so that can be easily accessed at runtime, uh, so it doesn't need to do all those ray casts every single sensor sweep in order to test what its uh, visible size is. Once we have a radar cross-section modeled, we can then add a couple parameters to the radar on the ships in order to, to make it more realistic for how they actually pick up these tracks. So the radars now have a couple more parameters. The first is radiated power, how much energy is coming out of these panels and going out into space. They also have a gain, which is how focused is that energy on a given point. And then they have a sensitivity, which is what's the minimum level of return energy that the radar can actually see before it's just noise. And so with all these parameters modeled, the way that the system works now is that it does the same sphere overlap to pick up the signatures, but it does a couple extra comparisons, which are um, basically the way it works is it calculates the radiated power going from the ship to the target. When the energy gets there, it then takes that arrived energy, multiplies it by the radar cross section to figure out how much energy will be bounced back, and then calculates how much energy actually arrives back at the ship that transmitted it. And so that is then compared against the sensitivity, and if it's higher than the sensitivity, then it can see that track. Now the cool thing about this radar cross-section system and the actual radar simulation is that it allows me to organically have things that are smaller be harder to detect without me having to make up numbers to do it. So those ships over there are visible because they're relatively large. So I've sent this missile. Uh, it's not visible quite yet because it's not inside the vision radius. There it goes. So. It's not actually showing up on radar yet until just now because the cross-section is so small and the gain of the radar is not high enough compared to its power for it to actually pick it up until it's at that range. So it reduces the, the reaction time that the ships have in order to prioritize point defenses so that they can target the threats. Also, once the radar simulation was in, uh, it was really easy to actually implement decoys because the decoys really just present a more appealing radar signature. So if I shoot a missile at my ship that has some decoys on it, right now decoys have to be launched manually, uh, but that will eventually be automated. So I launch two decoys just by clicking that button. They explode 
into these uh, these fake signatures, create this cloud of chaff. The missiles get uh, tricked into following that, and they pass the ship. And once they're past the cloud, uh, they're just looking for a new target, and they don't find one. And the enemy ships are also shooting at those missiles because they're not actually owned by anyone, so they're a threat to everybody, is how it sees it. Now, one thing you might notice is that I don't have a ship selected right now, but I can still see these tracks here. And if you were paying attention in the previous devlog, you might remember that you have to have a ship selected in order to see tracks. Also, I have this, sh this ship here selected, but I can still see these even though this ship is clearly blocked by this asteroid, so how can it see them? And the answer is that I implemented a sensor network, and I don't mean they're networked over the internet. The tracks were already networked over the internet because they, need they needed to be for multiplayer. But there is now a network that is, exists between these ships that allows them to share track data. So these two ships over here, they have line of sight on these targets, their radars are on, and so they're transmitting that track information to these ships over here. So if I go to these ships and uh, I turn off their communication, so I set them to radar only, these tracks go away. And even if I select these ships, they can't see these tracks, but these ones still can if I have them selected. Because these ships are no longer broadcasting their tracks to anyone else. So if I turn that back on, radar and communications, the tracks are now visible to those ships over there and to everyone, even when I don't have a ship selected. The reason that they go away when I have um, radars only and I don't have a ship selected it's partly a limitation, well it is a limitation, of how I implemented the sensor networks, but I actually kind of like it mechanically because it kind of puts a penalty on you for having your communications off. So having comms off makes your ship harder to detect, or it will eventually. Um, but you should also suffer a penalty for that. So you can't, if you don't have your communications on for this ship, you can't, in general, as the Admiral or Commodore or whatever, can't see what this ship is seeing unless you are actually actively tracking it. And now for the sexiest part of EW, which is obviously jamming. And this took me the better part of a week in order to get right. My original plan was, since the sensors are doing a sphere overlap where they'll see everything that they can see in their range, why not just add an extra collider for an active jammer, and then the sensors would know that they're being jammed. But I realized that a major limitation of that was twofold. One, it meant that you could never have a jammer that could jam from outside the range of a sensor. And you could also never jam from outside the field of view of a sensor. And both of those limitations were non-starters. They would uh, severely limit what the jamming system was capable of doing. And so I went for an active system instead, which was a lot more complicated and took me a lot longer to implement than the original system, which probably would have taken me an afternoon. Uh, but I'm much happier with how it works. And so there's this little antenna on the bottom here, which is my radar jammer. And radar jamming is the only thing that I got to implementing in terms of jamming because it was so complicated to get right. Uh, but communications jamming will come eventually and that will prevent ships from sharing tracks between each other. Now targeting it is just the same as targeting any other turreted weapon. So I'll select a track, I'll point it at the ship over here, and it turns and now it's uh, jamming this, this uh, direction. Now switching over to my other client so that we can see it from the uh, victim's point of view because there's no actual visuals for the person doing the jamming. I'm not really sure how I can really accomplish that without kind of breaking the um, the really diegetic nature of everything I've been trying to do. But let's turn on the jammer again. And you can see immediately those two tracks over there disappear and I'm just inundated with this mess this soup of contacts that are just meant to confuse me. I can't tell what's going on. And uh, more importantly, I can't target this ship. And the other one over here I can't see because it's outside my visual range, so I don't even know that that's there right now. Now, going back to what I was talking about before, when it comes to radar cross-section and the, and the radar simulation and returned energy and all that, the reason that it's really it was really necessary to do that is because it allows me to make it so that those tracks disappear when the jamming starts because it's comparing the returned energy from this legitimate contact with the amount of jamming energy being targeted at the ship and if the jamming energy is greater then this ship isn't able to maintain a track on this one and this applies to everything now so i've got a couple missiles coming in 
I should have picked them up by now, but everything's being jammed to hell, so uh, my radar hasn't picked them up until they get within what's called the burn-through range, where once they get within a certain range, the returned energy from these missiles is greater than the jamming energy, which allows me to pick them up. And obviously, it was too late. So that's our first pass on electronic warfare. I think this is the point where I need to call it a stop on adding new features. So radar jamming is where electronic warfare is going to stay for the time being. The other types of jamming and elint and things like that are going to have to come later. But what I need to do now is I need to take a step back and I need to close the loop on this game. Because right now there's really no end to it. I can sit there and I can hammer these ships all day and this game will never end until I quit. So really I need to take it and turn the game into a start to finish experience. You go to the main menu, you build your fleet, you start a game, you fight the enemy fleet, and then one of you wins. I, I need to implement a point system for the modules so that you know how much each thing is really worth in terms of value, so there can be some balance. I need to uh, make the stats much more understandable. I need to figure out uh, how to display all that information to the uh, into the player in the fleet editor. So that's what my next two weeks are going to be. And then hopefully at the end of those two weeks, I will have a, an actual full playable game that I can start playing with a couple people in uh, more frequent tests than what I've been doing and uh, see how it plays. So that is my update. Thank you for watching.